everybody, it is finally October, my favorite month, but that means I have to do my September wrap up. I read a total of nine books. So the first book I finished in September was Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a really great sci-fi that takes place in a series of ship logs, emails, instant messaging, and also a rambling dialogue of the ship's AI. At times the ramblings got a little confusing, especially if you didn't pay attention to the date and the time of the messages and ship logs um, because it does jump around in time. So I got a little confused sometimes. So I gave it a four out of five. Um, basically, this story involves a girl named Katie and a boy named Ezra who break up, and the day they break up, a company called Biotech invades their planet and basically sieges it, takes over, kills a lot of people, and it makes Katie and Ezra get stuck together to escape the planet and hitch a ride onto a government ship. It's a really great story, there's twists and turns, which really gets me excited for the sequel, Gemina, which releases this month on the 18th. Next, I finally finished The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. This was a month and a half of struggling to where I finally decided that I just had to finish it that night or just stop reading it. So I made up my mind, sat down on the couch, and just read. Those last 200 pages were very intriguing, very interesting. A lot of stuff happens, so it was very fast paced, which really kind of was a breath of fresh air for me. I still didn't really connect with any of the characters, and some of the major plot points really irked me, so I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5. And that's kind of being generous. I can't decide if I want to rate it a little bit lower than that. And I don't think I'm going to pick up the sequel. If you guys disagree with me and really think I should pick up the sequel, please let me know. Then I finished Shatter Me by Tahera Mafi. I gave it a 4 out of 5 because the premise and everything was super intriguing. It takes place where a girl named Violet kills people just by touching them. It gave me very much X-Men rogue vibes and I absolutely love rogue. She's one of my favorite X-Men. She gets found by the reestablishment, which is the current government and they want to use her to torture and get information from their enemies. Obviously, she's not okay with that. I loved Julia's inner dialogue and her fractured mind and just how kind of kooky and crazy and like OCD she is where she constantly counts. However, sometimes her inner dialogue is not fit for the situation, especially when she checks out and has to notice the attractiveness of every single guy she comes into contact with. I was super intrigued by the story, so I am definitely excited to get to the sequel as soon as I can. And then next we have the impromptu Diversathon. And out of the six books I wanted to read during the Diversathon, I finished two during that week, and then I read three more by the end of the month. I missed out on The Keeper's Vow by Francina Simone. I read three chapters and I wasn't really feeling the story, so I put it aside to read other stories I was more interested in, and I hope I can pick it up at a later date. So the first book I finished was Seven Ways We Lie by Riley Redgate. I'm not going to go into too much detail about it because I actually have a book talk on it, so I will leave the link down below to my book talk. 
Uh, I will just say that I really enjoyed this book, so I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Next, I read The Listener by Rachel Bosch. I gave this story a 4 out of 5 because I was very intrigued by the premise. It takes place with a therapist called Malcolm as he is sitting with a client called Leah. And Leah reveals herself to actually being Noah, a previous client of his a few months back. Now, Noah is really struggling with his own gender identity and just his sexual identity and all of those messy feelings being in his first semester of college. There was a few times though where I did get a little scatterbrained and confused while reading the story, but it is definitely one where you will keep going back and thinking about and just kind of digesting, it really grows on you, and that is why I'm really glad I read this book. Next, I read If I Was Your Girl by Meredith Russo. This is a very heartbreaking coming of age story about a girl named Amanda who is transgendered. She moves to a new school to live with her father and try public school for the first time after her transition. And this is another really messy book where Amanda struggles with whether to tell people about her past and her previous identity and how scary life can be for these certain individuals. It does go back in time so that you can see Amanda struggling with depression and suicide and her transition. So it was a very fantastic beautiful read and Meredith Russo is actually transgendered herself so it was a great own voice story and I absolutely fell in love with this book and I praise it so so much. I gave it a 5 out of 5 definitely putting this on some of my top books of the year. Next I finished Gemini by Sonia Mukherjee and this was another really beautiful story about conjoined twins. They are conjoined by their back and their spinal cord is actually fused. Both girls, they're named Clara and Haley, and Clara is kind of a quiet, sheltered girl who's very um, anxious and she absolutely loves stargazing. And then you have Haley, who's very spunky, and she really tries to be as tough as nails. She has like pink hair, and you know, she wears her thick eyeliner like a shield, and she's an artist. She absolutely like needs to have that tough persona, and she constantly says that I don't need to be anxious because Clara is anxious for me. And so she feels like she needs to be the tough person to keep Clara strong. So this takes place where the school announces a Sadie Hawkins dance where girls get to pick their own dates. And there's some really interesting situations in here because they're struggling with how to go about doing this dance and asking people out and going on dates. And I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5. And so it was a really great book about self-discovery that was pretty stinking cheesy. Next, I finished We Awaken by Callista Lynn. This is a story about a girl named Violet whose dreams is to make it into the Manhattan Dance Conservatory and she has an audition for that. It really struggles with grief as the previous year her father died in a car accident that also left her brother in a coma. But there's a lot of strong themes in this book, especially where Victoria herself struggles with her own sexuality, so her friend Ellie puts a label on her that she is a lesbian because she always felt that the person she would get married to was a woman. However, intimacy terrifies her and also is super unappealing and kind of makes her nauseous. So when she's dreaming, she sees an entity called Ashlyn, who is the creator of Good Dreams, and they talk and get to know each other, and sure enough, Ashlyn tells Victoria to look up asexuality because maybe Victoria is an asexual. So there's a lot of asexual uh, 
education in this story and also self-discovery and also bringing yourself out of grief in order to succeed and master your own dreams. So it was a really cheesy story, is highly predictable, but it was still really beautiful in Ashlyn and Victoria's interactions, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5. And we have the very last book that I read, which is Habibi by Naomi Shahab Nye. And this was another really beautiful kind of coming of age, coming out of your shell story about a girl named Liana who is an American Arab. She's 15 years old and has her first kiss when her father decides to uproot the family and move them back to Palestine, which is his homeland. And she's obviously not happy with this. When they land in Palestine, she is very negative and says she hates the land. She has to deal with a culture shock of changes where she can't do things she used to do, like wear shorts and, you know, brush her hair out on their balcony. So there's a lot of differences there. Also, she doesn't speak any of the languages around there. So she's actually having to learn a language and anybody who's had to learn a language as a teenager knows how hard it is, so she's really struggling. But she meets a boy named Amer, and she's immediately smitten. However, she finds out that he is Jewish, and because of the Jewish-Arab conflict in the 1990s where this takes place, things are a little bit hard, and so it's very much a story about peace and learning to move on from past histories. Um, there's book is serious when it needs to be, but it's very light and childish, and there's prose and poems that I really enjoyed about the story, so I gave it a four out of five. So those are all of the stories I read and finished in September. September. I was really hoping to read and finish Strike by Delilah Dawson. This is book two in their hit series. I am so stinking close. I have about a hundred pages left, so I am definitely going to finish this this weekend. I would love for you to comment down below what your favorite book was in September, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!